Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, so I'm just sitting in the airport in Glasgow, Scotland, getting ready to head to Heathrow and fly back to Nashville and see my family after being gone for a little over a week. Miss them greatly. But I had a tremendous, tremendous stay here in Scotland. So impressed in so many ways, except from the weather. Everything else was great. Um, so I wanted to touch on something. We talked about a couple of dogs, one in particular that showed up at, at the seminar that you know I promised people we would talk about further. So I'll just say a few things here about it a little bit before I get on my plane. I don't even know how the sound will be since I'm in the airport, but yeah, I think it's so important to talk about this further. Maybe we could open up a discussion. Maybe when I get back, we'll do a Facebook Live or something where we could open up some dialogue here because uh, I think it's tremendously important for the industry, especially to combat the radical groups that are out there to take our tool, you know, trying to take our tools. But um, two dogs in particular I wanted to talk about, and it'll be really quick. One of them, uh, really unbelievably committed trainer from, from New, New, came from New York, from New York all the way to Scotland with a dog, hi David, his name is David, tremendous individual. I mean, got so much respect for this guy. And he flew all the way over here to Scotland for the seminar with a rescue dog. And I'm not a huge lover of the whole rescue dog term thing, but if you're ever gonna call a dog a rescue dog, this is a good situation to do so. Got this, this is a dog from Thailand. So this dog was rescued from Thailand. You guys know what they do to dogs in Thailand and some of these Asian countries. It's, it's beyond barbaric. They're freaking savages, and it's absolutely grotesque what they do to dogs. Not even so much because the way they, they eat the animals, you know, things are different all over the world, but the torture that is, is put upon these animals to do so. Uh, humans are really disgusting savages at times. So David brought this dog over and we met him Saturday on a pack walk. Roddy Kirk does this tremendous pack walk. We had so many dogs there and we're out in the mountains hiking and really started my trip off right. And David told me a little about the dog and you know, it's, it's a pretty, you know, shut down and, and scared of the world, rightfully so, it's been through a lot. And I got to see it firsthand on the pack walk, you know, when David was just standing still and a couple of dogs approached his dog to say hello and he just dropped down into the fetal position and started screaming and I mean it was a it was a brutal scream like you know you would imagine if you were torturing a dog so that broke my heart so I know we have to help this dog any way we can um, but to make a long story short you know we started the seminar on Sunday and that dog sat there very very quietly not a lot of activity and just spending time with David in this environment which is really beneficial also because you're around all kinds of dogs and distractions and just doing that alone gets to build this dog up to be a little stronger and then the first day of the seminar I believe it was out uh, maybe the second day um, Duke Duke Ferguson who did the seminar with me he did some clicker training and food training all positive reinforcement with the dog and did really well Duke did a really great job with them definitely brought some life out of this dog you know and um, we talked later on in the day, me and David, and he really wanted to see if the e-collar could help this dog because I talk about what the e-collar does for fearful dogs all the time. And so I said, yeah, of course, we, we could definitely do that, you know? And, you know, I guaranteed him it's not gonna make him worse, but I'm pretty sure it will benefit him as it almost always does. Now, I wouldn't even say almost, it always does, let's face it. And so that last day of the workshop, you know, I took this dog we were outside I don't think anyone filmed it unfortunately but a lot of people got to see and I wanted people to see you know I did a little marker training with him verbal marker training positive reinforcement and he did great I spent I mean very little time doing that just to get the dog accustomed to me a little bit quickly and uh, you know he looked good tail was out and he had a little bit of life in him and he was taking food and then I said, okay, we're gonna jump right in and, and we're gonna start introducing this dog to the e-collar, which for a lot of people is very, very scary because here's a dog that's been through hell and is just com completely shut to the world, you know? And uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people, maybe even there, think, well, why, why would we even try that? Because I know from experience the possibilities that we have, you know? And so we did. And so in an extremely short session, I introduced the e-collar the way I do all dogs, excuse me, 
I don't know how loud that is to you guys, sorry. Um, oh, I've never done this from an airport like this, but I really wanted to open the discussion so when I get home we could discuss more. So I introduced the e-collar with the dog. The only thing I did with this dog, I didn't use any verbal commands. I don't think at all, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I may have started towards the end, but I don't think so. And so, you know, once I found the dog's working level, which is, you know, was average, just like to all the other dogs, it was on a five or a six on a mini educator. You know, what I did was start introducing a tap from the e-collar with a little bit of leash pressure. And, you know, as soon as the dog figured out that turning and moving my way turned off that very foreign strange sensation not only did it you know go away but he also received a reward and at first he didn't want to take food wasn't high value enough to him so we found something a little more higher value that's very important guys when we're dealing with these dogs you know you gotta you gotta pay him in a big way with something special just to make the experience that more amazing for him right he started taking food and, um, you know, I've talked about it many times. We always try to avoid confusion when we're teaching and dog training, but in cases like this, with aggression cases and fearful cases, I use that confusion. I call it positive confusion. You know, that may sound stupid to a lot of people, but I've seen it hundreds of times. And the beautiful thing about the e-collar is that it is so foreign and the dog never experienced it. So when that dog first experienced that very foreign sensation, you know, he can no longer be in that freaked out, fearful, scared stage of anything because it turns the mind to what's going on up here. What does he feel? What is that? You know, he can't pay attention to all his fears at that time. And the second I help him and guide him toward me, and that goes away, that empowers a dog that has never been empowered to do anything before. Very, very powerful, guys, very powerful. You know, so I am grateful that so many people got to see that. So I worked that dog for a couple of minutes. I don't know if I ever used a verbal command. I may have, but I don't think I did. Most of it was completely non-verbal, you know, starting with a tap on the e-collar, you know, before I would implement a little bit of leash pressure to guide him and let him know, hey, this is what I want you, I want you to do, buddy. His name is Sammy. I want you to come this way, Sammy. And when he did, that weird sensation goes away and he receives a reward. Very empowering very empowering to a dog guys and what happens also is once he sees this strange strange situation going on that he's new to and not only does he receive good things but nothing bad happens that's powerful to a dog that struggles you know that has never won anything in his life doesn't know how to win you know what I mean there is no hope there well now we give the dog a little bit of hope and so it didn't take long before there was no longer any leash pressure needed nothing tap on the e-collar he turned and came to me with his tail up looking good taking food that's a beautiful thing and a lot of people got to see that and the reason that's so important to me guys like I talked about at the seminar the radical people that are trying to take our tools they have a lot of, of uh, <laughs> evidence that they can use against us against people who use tools you know there's people that put out a lot of stuff out there that that is awful and we don't we don't we don't all uh, agree with the things that go on out there when it comes to our tools, the prong collars, and especially the e-collars. So it's very, very important that we produce stuff that go against everything that the radical anti-movement believes in. But not only that, but that is completely different from what are the really heavy-handed handed trainers out there produce. Really important. You know, we have to show the people. So imagine the way I like to, to think of it, everything I put out, especially when it comes to the e-collar, I wanna make sure I can't give the radicals any, any evidence to support their ideas that e-collars and other tools are bad. That's always my effort, always. Everything I do, that's what I'm trying to think of. And so I can guarantee you, if the anti-tool, anti-e-collar people went in front of a legislature, they're not going to use my stuff. They're not going to take that video of Sammy, who has been tortured in his life and is completely distraught. They're not going to want anyone sitting on a legislature to see that video because those people are going to be like, wait a second, you're putting an e-collar on a dog that went through this and it's making them better? It goes against everything they believe in. 
So I'm trying to do my part to better our situation, okay? Just like the dogs always want to better their situation, I want to better our situation in the industry. So that's very, very important to me. And it was a wonderful thing for people to see. Now that's just the tiny tip of the iceberg. We're just starting there with Sammy. You know, we got a lot of work to do to make him a completely better dog, but he's going to get a, excel with proper e-collar training. You know, he really is. And uh, it was just a beautiful thing to see, and, and hopefully that alone made it worth David coming all the way over across the pond, as they say, you know. And, and then we had another dog uh, group of trainers came down, I think from the England area, you know, Nikki and her friends, three, three, three more sport dog people, I believe. They were great people, great bunch of people, you know, like really like these folks. <laughs> Just great personalities and attitudes and no ego there that we see with the working dog folks all often. And uh, Nikki had a, a German Shepherd that really had some psychological issues and also was scared of, you know, he was fine when he was outside with nothing around, but she said once there was any shadows or movement or if we tried to bring him to the tent, she couldn't do it, it was gonna be bad. So we got to the point where, um, you know, when she had that dog, this was a really short story. I just said, just bring him in there. That's what the leash is for, guys. The leash is a translator and a GPS. Tell the dog what you want through the leash and show the dog where you want him to go through the leash. And Nikki's a great little handler and she just took the dog and she brought him in and he was looking around at first. But you know what happened, guys? It didn't take that dog any time at all just to lay down and sleep the whole friggin' time she had him in there. That was wonderful. So guess what? We introduced him to the e-collar also and he absolutely excelled. He just did absolutely beautiful, you know? And the proper usage of this tool, guys, what it can do for dogs with no confidence, with a lot of fear, a lot of insecurities. I preach it so much because I've done it for years. You know, I've done it for years and I've shown it and it does tremendous things for these dogs. You know, I'm not a big fan of when someone says, hey, this dog's a good candidate for e-collar training. All dogs are good candidates for e-collar training. You know, and I still think, unfortunately, in the industry, there's tons of people using e-collars, not to their full benefit and more of a corrective and punishment way. And, and that's gonna hurt us. That's just gonna hurt us in the long run, guys. Sorry about that noise. People are looking at me like I'm a psychopath in here. And the reason I'm wearing my glasses in here, guys, because I, I prefer to look at what I'm saying. And if I have to try to look at the camera, it's kind of weird when you're filming. Okay, that's why I have my glasses on inside, which makes me look more like an idiot around here. But again, two dogs that struggled with any confidence and a, and a lot of fears, you know? And um, the thing is, I'm never gonna put the dog through any physical pain and stress. You know what I mean? I'm gonna do everything I can to avoid that. And, cause that's real. So if there's something that's causing harm to a dog physically, well, we're going to do everything we can to do the opposite. But when it comes to, to the psychological stress that both these dogs suffered, that's make-believe. If there was something that they had to be scared of, I'd take that in consideration, but there's not. And so it's our job to move them forward and show them a better way, change that mindset. And, uh, you know, there. I mean, this workshop, guys, there were so many. These people were incredible. I mean, it's, it's really humbling. I met the most beautiful people and most incredible dogs over the past eight days all around Scotland. And we had the worst weather possible for this workshop and everyone just laughed it off and we trained dogs in some of the worst conditions, you know? And uh, I'm looking forward to do it again. And I learned a lot about what the best format is and what people really want, you know? And people want to train dogs. They wanna work dogs when they come to these things. They don't want to hear us talk. They want to work dogs. And so hopefully I, I, I did my best to make that happen and appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know. Uh, huge impact on me this trip has had. It really has in every way possible. Now, Scotland, you need to learn that we have this thing out there out in the world. It's called sugar and it makes things sweeter. Um, I'm going to bring a lot of it next time I come. You got to you got to learn how to use sugar a little bit and salt doesn't hurt either. OK, Scotland guys like bland food out here. I don't know what that's all about, but I love this country, love the people. And uh, when I get back, I do think we need to maybe do a, a live Facebook live and really talk deeper about these issues with these dogs and the use of the e-collar with it. And hopefully we can answer a lot more questions that maybe some of you guys at the workshop were scared to ask or didn't think of. 
And if that's something you want to do, you let me know and I'll, I'll set that up and, and we'll make it happen, okay guys? But again, those were two dogs where we utilized the e-collar for the first time that the, the anti-e-collar people and radicals out there would never want anyone to see because they can't argue it. Dogs don't lie. Dogs always tell the truth, okay? And hopefully, hopefully that opened a lot of eyes to the people that were there. Again, once again, appreciate you guys very much. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the love and the hospitality. And I hope I see you all again soon. If you wanna do a live and discuss this further, let's do it. Just let me know, okay? Peace from Scotland.